Welcome to this tutorial on surgery modifiers 54, 55, 58, and 59. This tutorial reviews the guidelines for these surgery modifiers. The information given in this training is correct as of today. The most current information contained in this presentation can be found on the Neridian Medicare website and the CMS website at the links listed on this slide. We'll begin with modifier 54, which is used by the surgeon when he's billing for the surgical service only. This is when one physician performs a surgical procedure and another physician provides the preoperative and or the postoperative management. When only performing the surgical portion, submit your surgery code with modifier 54. To give you a scenario, uh, Susan Jones lives in a small town with no orthopedic surgeon for 50 miles. Her local doctor, Dr. Green, refers her to Dr. Smith in a bigger city to perform a knee replacement. Dr. Smith does the surgical procedure and any follow-up care until Mrs. Jones goes home and is relinquished to Dr. Green's care. Dr. Smith is going to use modifier 54 and the dates of service is going to be the procedure dates. He will put the date he relinquishes care to Dr. Green in box 19. Modifier 55 is for post-operative management only. This is used when a physician performs the post-operative management and another physician performs the surgical procedure. The only times it cannot be billed this way is if both physicians are members of the same group practice or the surgeon is not sharing the care of the patient during the post-op period, then the surgery must be submitted as a global package. So in the example from the previous slide, Dr. Green, the hometown physician, will use modifier 55 with the dates of service from the procedure, and then the date Dr. Smith relinquished care to him will go in box 19. On this table, we have an example of a claim by the surgeon who is billing for the surgery and did not relinquish care until 45 days after. The date of service remains the date of surgery, but in the comment field, item 19, it must tell us the dates he saw the patient postoperatively before he relinquished care. Once again, the number of units is entered as 1. This is what the other physician's claim will look like who assumed the postoperative care on the patient after 45 days. Again, the same date and the same surgical code is used. In item 19 is the date the provider assumed care through the end of the global period. Once again, the number of days or units is one. Remember that both physicians must bill with modifier 54 and 55 in order to receive appropriate payments. If one provider doesn't use a modifier, they could potentially receive payment for the entire global package incorrectly. Now we're going to look at the Medicare Physician Fee Schedule Database. On the left hand side of the slide, you'll see I have the directions of how to get to the database spreadsheet. Now to determine the split in care. You will want to look at the column marked post-op percent. For code 22812, arthrodesis posterior for spinal deformity with or without cast eight or more vertebral segments. As you can see on this slide, the post-op percentage listed is 21%. If both the surgeon and the post-op provider manage days of the care together, we will need to determine what amount they will need to bill per day of care. Now here's how that allowance is allocated. Per the fee schedule database, the post-op percentage was 21%. That did include 19 days of post-op care. That code 22812 has a participating allowance of 2,000 $159.49. Now, if you take that number times 21%, you'll arrive at a amount of $453.49. Now, 
If you take out the 2% sequestration amount, you'll arrive at $444.42. Now this is amount is the portion allocated to post-op care. Now to determine how much the provider is paid per day, we need to divide $444.42 by 19 days to determine a daily total of $23.39 per day. Now you're going to take that number times how many days your provider managed the patient's post-op care, and that is the amount that you will bill. The next modifier is 58. These are for staged or more extensive procedures that require more than one surgical session or surgery by the physician during the post-operative period. The documentation requirement for this modifier is to indicate performance of a procedure or service during the post-op period. These are planned at the time of the original procedure and are staged or more extensive than the original procedure or for the therapy following a diagnostic surgical procedure. One example might be cleft palate repair. Now here, in this type of surgery, they can't fix it all in one operative session. They'll do phase one and then come back to do phase two at a later date. Phase two would normally be within the global period, so modifier 58 is needed to have the claim considered for payment. Otherwise, the system will deny the second claim for being within the global period of the first. Modifier 58 would not be used when the code description states one or more visits or sessions. This modifier also would not be used to report treatment of a problem that requires a return to the operating room. In this slide, we have an example of when you would use modifier 58. So on this one, the surgeon removed a malignant lesion, including the margins from the trunk, arm, or leg. He made a full thickness incision through the skin, usually in an electric shape around and under the lesion. The lesion and a rim of normal tissue are removed. The skin incision is sutured. Since this had an excise diameter greater than 4 centimeters, code 11606 was used and a complex or layered closure is reported separately. Let's say a reconstructive procedure was necessary such as utilization of local flaps, so code 13101, or 2.6 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters. This is a staged procedure and modifier 58 is used on the repair closure a few days later. Modifier 59 is your repeat modifier. This is used for distinct procedural services. This indicates that a procedure or service was distinct or independent from other services performed on the same day. This modifier is usually used to identify procedures or services that are not normally reported together but are appropriate under the circumstances. Documentation in your chart must support a different session or patient encounter, different procedure or surgery, different site or organ system, separate incision or excision, separate lesion or separate injury, or area of injury in extensive injuries. Here we have a reminder that it's a misuse to use modifier 59 if your two procedure codes are not in the National Correct Coding Initiative or NCCI manual or on two of the same code. Here are a couple of resources that can be reviewed for appropriate modifier usage. Viridian has a modifier section that can be found under Browse by Topic. Scroll through and click on the modifier link for additional information. CMS also has a manual section in Publication 100-04, Chapter 12 for Global Surgery and Other Modifiers. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.